Hi everyone, it's Stephanie and I'm here for another spinning tutorial. Actually, this one I should call a spinning experiment. I'm trying something, combining two fibers that I have never done before, never spun together like this before, and I am going to spin them for, from the cloud. First of all, I have some Angora, which is lovely and soft, and as you can see, very fine. Let's see if we can, you see all of that, that halo around there? Angora is from Rabbits. It's very soft and very warm. And I'm going to be combining it with cashmere. Cashmere is from goats. It is the undercoat from certain goats that produce this fiber. Not every fiber or not every goat produces cashmere. Only certain ones do. And it's not, it's actually not a breed of goat. Um, it's a goat that you just, Sometimes you have cashmere goats, cashmere producing goats, and sometimes you don't. That's one reason cashmere is so expensive, because it's very rare, it's difficult to harvest, look at that tiny staple length, and the reason it's difficult to harvest is because cashmere, goats shed the cashmere, so you brush the goats, and that's how you harvest the cashmere. So the, the goat farmer has to brush each goat to collect the cashmere. It's similar to the reason that Angora is more expensive, and that is because although rabbits, Angora rabbits, are actually a breed, but the way that it is harvested is time consuming, and because it comes from rabbits, of course, each rabbit is very small, and so it, it doesn't produce as much fiber as, say, a sheep or an alpaca. And I know there's some controversy around the web about Angora fiber, but the way Angora is harvested is actually very similar to the same way that um, cashmere is harvested. Either the Angora farmer will pluck the fiber from the rabbit, and plucking is not the way we consider plucking, like plucking your eyebrows, pulling out hair by the root. Plucking happens when an Angora rabbit is blowing their coat or if you think about it in terms of house pets, shedding. So what happens is the um, person who's harvesting the fiber will just go through and just pull out the loose or shedding fibers. And that's all plucking means. They'll either do that or if they are harvesting Angora from a rabbit that does not blow their coat or shed, they'll simply use clippers like they would with a sheep or if one of your kids was getting a clipper cut. So enough history or enough um, fiber tutorials there. What I'm going to do here, something I've never done before, I'm going to combine these two fibers and I am using my matchless spinning wheel instead of my echo because each of these fibers would like to be spun in a fine preparation. Excuse my dog River here, she's our new puppy. She wants to be making an appearance. So I'm going to combine them into a cloud and all I'm going to do is just kind of with my hands tease out the fiber, combining them as I do so. I dropped a little bit of the Angora at my feet and I'm going to get it before, uh oh, puppy stole it. No, you can't have that. So this one has already been loved by puppies. So I'm going to just combine it like this and I thought I would do this on camera because I have never seen a lot about spinning cashmere especially and I honestly don't see a lot about spinning angora either I see a few videos I've seen people spinning angora from rabbits sitting right on their lap and that is when the rabbit is blowing their coat they're spinning the fiber or the yeah the fiber that his been shed. They're not plucking out individual hairs. So the reason I decided to film this before I even tried it on my own was so that we could each learn together and so that I can comment on what I'm seeing and any difficulty I might be facing as I process and then spin the fiber. So the first thing I'm noticing is that the cashmere staple length is so much shorter 
than the Angora staple length. Look what's happening here as I'm combining the fiber. So this is the cashmere right here, and this is the Angora. So what I'm doing is just pulling everything apart and trying to make sure that the fiber, especially the cashmere, is integrated in with the Angora. Now I'm not looking for a straight 50-50 blend or mix here. Sorry about the dogs. There we go. Someone's walking in front of our house and it's like they're my alarm bells. So I'm trying to get a good mix going on here. Like it's starting to get a little bit better through here, but still not exactly where I'd like it to be. So this might be better carded but I thought I'd try it, and like I said, we can all learn about this together. And don't worry, I'm not gonna spend the entire time carding this, or combining this, I should say. All I'm doing is really fluffing up the fiber, so it's not like I get a clump of cashmere and then a clump of angora. I want it to be as integrated as I can make it, and I thought that doing it this way would be fun because sometimes I don't have a lot of time for my fiber arts. And so sometimes I don't wanna haul out the drum carter or even the hand cards. So I thought if this would be a nice, quick fiber prep, it would be nice and fun and we'll see what we come up with. So for right now, for this video, I think we have it, not this part, look, this is cashmere that I'm gonna pull out. It is not combined yet, but it's getting there. We have the fiber, probably, if I spent another 30 or 40 minutes doing this, I could combine it a little bit more, but I don't want to spend that much time because the point of preparing the fiber this way is to save time and just get on with the spinning. So I'm gonna add this, I'm seeing a whole big block of Angora here right now. So I'm going to add a little bit of cashmere in here. And then we're just gonna start and we're gonna see what happens. This is what you've gotta do when you're, um, not just when you're starting to spin, but really throughout your entire time spinning, play with the fiber. See what it says, see what it wants to do. This is how you learn, <laughs> sorry, there's River in the background. This is how you learn how different fibers behave under different circumstances. Experiment with it, play with it. Like when you were a kid, you didn't feel the need to finish a masterpiece every time you picked up a box of crayons. Sometimes you just wanted to play with the crayons in color. That's what we're doing right now. We are playing with our fibers and we are seeing what we come up with. Maybe we'll like it, maybe we won't. But either way, we've learned something. What I've learned so far is that unless the spinning ends up being fantastic, the different staple lengths of these two fibers might not be great for this preparation method, okay? I have a little bit of cashmere left over that I'm gonna put back in this bag. And I'm not sure if this is because I bought this whole giant bag right here of cashmere. Hold on, you didn't even get a good look at this giant bag of cashmere at the Kentucky Sheep and Fiber Festival and I bought it for two or for $25. It was originally $100 from the Woolery and I only paid $25 for it. So I don't know if, because I've never worked with cashmere before, I don't know if that means that it was not a very good quality to start with. It feels really soft. There's not a lot of vegetable matter in it, but the staple length is very, very short. So it could be that this is just how all cashmere is and it's a learning process for me too. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead, I have this as combined as I think it's going to be for right now. 
you see how that is you can still see the difference and that's why I wanted to use different colors too so that you can see the cashmere is the brown the angora is the white so what I'm going to do is just put this whole cloud in my lap and by the way that's what this preparation method is called it's called spinning from the cloud okay because it looks like a little cloud of fiber and it is wonderfully soft you all I can tell tell you this right away for the tactile enjoyment of these fibers these are wonderful fibers to combine because they are both so soft you could throw a little alpaca in here too and I think that would be wonderful but these are incredibly soft fibers so but what I'm gonna do is put this on my lap I have my leader on my matchless already we're going to spin clockwise because that's the way I spin when I am starting out remember you always want to spin your singles one way typically clockwise and then ply the opposite way so in my case this will be counterclockwise so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my leader in my left hand, hold it open like this, and with the same left hand, I'm just going to pinch out a little bit of fiber. Looks like it's I'm getting mainly Angora, a little bit of cashmere in here, and I'm going to put it through the leader and fold it back on itself. And then we are going to start spinning, letting the twist. I'm doing uh, what I, the type of draft I'm doing here. I'm not doing long draw, which I could do, but I feel like I wanna smooth out some of the, the rough spots in this cloud still so that I can further combine the fiber. And I'm also seeing that it's not showing up really well for you. So maybe I'll try and do a little bit thicker spin so you can see it. It is definitely not creating a consistent yarn can see here but you see it is very very lumpy right now which I don't really want so that's telling me that either I have to slow down my spinning so that I can I can draft out each of these cashmere lumpy pieces or I should use oh and it broke okay so apparently I didn't have enough twist in it in the beginning this is what it's creating right now which is kind of a mess. It could be pretty. I could use it as a textured art yarn, but eh, that's not really what I'm wanting to do. So I'm going to take that off. I'm not even going, going to try to salvage it because like I said, this is something, it's a learning experience. I want to see how this fiber prep method works. And so far, although I love spinning from the cloud, uh -oh dog is getting into the fiber hold on okay i'm back what i'm learning so far is that although i like using spinning from the cloud in other ways like especially if i'm spinning a textured art yarn love spinning from the cloud when i'm spinning locks or anything like that so far i'm not liking this method and that's okay to find out we're not always going to put out videos where everything is perfect because I think sometimes we learn more from figuring out what we don't like. All I'm doing right now, this much stayed on. So here's what the fiber is looking like right now. And it's okay. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not what I'm looking for. So we're going to just get this back on the wheel and try it again. If the same thing happens again, I will pretty much know this is not the way I want to combine these two fibers, but that's okay. Okay, so we've got everything off. We're gonna start again, same way. Put it through the leader and start spinning. Now I'm gonna try and go treadle slow, slower. I'm gonna make a slightly thicker yarn 
Typically, I would spin cashmere and angora very thin because that's really what the fiber want at, and it broke again. Okay, so what I'm learning from this experiment, let me show you what we got here. And what I could do also is adjust my tension right here. Let's take some of it off. We'll try that this time, see if it works, okay? And it's, it's pretty, uh, I like the texture. I love the combination of the soft colors, but I am not liking this prep method because of the different staple lengths. Let's see if we can join the fiber. Let's see how that is. I am not even positive that this will work, but we're gonna just try it and see and I'm going very, very slowly. I've loosened my tension so that it's not going, it's not pulling as much onto the wheel. And this is what you have to do when you're, you're either learning to spin or if you're spinning something that's new to you, you're, it's trial and error. So what happened right here is I got a big clump of cashmere right here. So I, I'm holding the twist right here so that it's in front of my thumb so that it's not going into my fiber supply. And I'm just sort of straightening out the yarn there. Okay, so now I'm gonna let it go. And I said before that I was using the short forward draw and that's, that's what I'm doing. And now that I'm slowing down and that I've adjusted the tension, it is still very lumpy. It is not an even spin at all. It's pretty, but oops, small staple length. We're going to try and join again, see if it works. And it is, it's taking up, it's joining, but it is definitely if you wanted to make a textured yarn this way. Let me show you what we've got here. I mean, it's very, it's pretty. I think it's a, a very pretty yarn. It's a very pretty combination, but it's not what I was looking for. So what I'm going to do, so for right now, for what I was wanting to do, ah, broke again. Okay, I am going to say that this fiber preparation method for combining at least the cashmere I have with the angora I have is not working. This is not a successful spin for me. And you're gonna have those too. But like I said, it's a learning exper experience. Let me show you what we came up with. It's a pretty yarn. See that, that's pretty. But it's not what I was looking for, okay? There's two different staple lengths, I think, are just not working here. So we know to avoid this fiber prep method, with these two fibers. I'll try it maybe in the next week or two with hand carding the fibers together, and we'll see if that works. Maybe we'll try a long draw preparation for that. So until next time, please like and subscribe this video. Let me know what you think of this, of just um, doing these videos where I experiment with different techniques that I haven't tried, even though that it failed. Let me know if you like seeing things that don't work out as much as you like seeing things that do work out. Because sometimes I feel like we're under too much pressure to be perfect in everything you, that we do. And the fact is none of us are. So I love these two fibers. And if I had been attempting an art yarn, I like what it's coming up with here, but maybe not enough where I would do this on a consistent basis because you're really having to fight the fibers to, to get them to perform this way. Um, and this is what I mean when I say you really want to spin the way the fibers want to be spun or combine the fibers in the way that they want to be combined, okay? See, look, it's even, some of it's falling apart here, which we obviously don't want either. So anyway, let me know what you think of this. Like and subscribe. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Nipper. Have, happy spinning.